Today, I'm going to show you how to add colored backgrounds to your portraits in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you a quick way you can add any color to the background of a portrait in Photoshop. We're gonna go over cutting your subject out of the background and even how to add a vignette to make the background color look perfectly realistic. We got a great episode, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So here's our image for today. Now, the first thing we need to do is cut our subject out of the background so we can replace the background with a solid color. Now, in this case, it's a pretty simple background, which makes it pretty easy, and we're gonna go through the entire process in this episode. But if you're dealing with a complex background, like the background behind me, for instance, you may need some other tools to help cut your subject out of the background. And we've got some links on the screen for you right now on how to do that using like the pen tool and other methods for cutting your subject out. So let's jump back in. We'll show you if you are dealing with a simple background like this one, it's really pretty easy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my magic wand tool. And this basically just selects anywhere that's similar to wherever I click. So we're gonna click here on the background and you see we've collect, selected this area. Now it's not selecting this whole uh, background here. So I'm gonna just hold the shift key and you can see I've got a little plus icon and then every time I click, it's going to add that area to this selection. So we've got this entire area selected. Now I'm gonna continue holding shift. We're gonna click here inside of her arm. There we go, we'll do the same thing up there. And then shift click a couple times up there as well. Keep in mind, the higher the number your tolerance is set to, the more you're going to select. Okay, so now we have a selection around our background. And again, this is a very easy way to select out your subject because the background is so simple. But if you do have a more complex background, you can use the pen tool to cut your subject out of that. And we've got links on the screen for you to follow those videos. Okay, so now that our subject is, we have a selection basically of our background. First thing I want to do is inverse the selection. So we've got the selection of the background. I want the selection to be of my subject instead. So I'm going to go to select and down to inverse. Okay, so now instead of selecting the background, we're selecting our subject. And what we want to do is go to select and mask, which is right up here if you're in any of your selection tools. You'll see a little button. Now, if you don't see that, go up to select and down to select and mask. Now, a quick little note, if you guys are using older versions of Photoshop, this is gonna be, this is gonna be called the Refine Edge or the Refine Selection. It works really similarly. They just kind of changed a couple features and renamed it. So we're gonna jump back in to Select and Mask. Okay, so here's the Select and Mask screen, and we've got tutorials on how to use Select and Mask. We'll put a link on the screen right now. Now, we have a few different options as far as our view goes. We can choose to put this on an onion screen onion skin, we can have it be an overlay, we can have this be on black and on white. Now in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and click on black so I can make sure I've got a nice clean selection. Now areas like hair, that's a little bit more difficult. You can see it's done a pretty good job around you know, the shirt and things like that. We do have a little bit of a white fringing, but areas around the hair, usually that's a little bit more difficult to cut out. So here within the Select and Mask dialog, we wanna go right over to this tool. This is the Refine Edge Brush Tool. And basically start by clicking inside of your subject and just draw out. And you wanna make sure you cover all the areas that you want the tool to kinda of clean up for you. So there we go. I've just painted and you can see it's really done a great job removing that white edge. So we'll do the same thing in here. Remember to start inside your subject. So we're gonna click here in this, subject, I'm going to paint right over here around the edge. There we go. And as I let go, you're going to see it's going to do a really nice job removing that white edge from our subject. Now this tool will actually work with a background as well. So let's go ahead, we're going to do this real quick here, and then we're going to pop our background in and we can run this tool again and we'll get an even better selection. All right, so I'm just moving around this. You can see the, the edge here. When you use the magic wand tool, it's really not gonna ever give you a perfect edge. It's, it's always gonna do stuff like this. So again, click here inside the subject and simply paint over. I'm just holding this out. So click and drag, paint over that area and you can see it's gonna clean it up really nicely for me. So there we go, we'll go right up there. 
All right, and you can see even here, there's a, a bit of, this is called fringing, by the way. Whenever you're cutting a subject out from the background, this is, a, this is called fringing there. Okay, so we'll click in here and paint around, and this is gonna help remove that fringing. All right, basically you're just telling Photoshop, I don't want that white little outline there. All right, and we'll just do it for the rest of the shirt. Okay, and let's hit OK. Now, that's still a selection, okay? So it, it hasn't cut anything out. We're still just creating this selection. So now our subject, and we feel pretty good about this selection. So we're gonna go ahead and load a layer mask and then load our new color as a background. So now that our selection is good to go, let's go ahead and click on our layer mask icon. Looks like a square with a circle in it. There we go, and you can see it cuts our subject out from the background. Really, really nice. Now, let's go ahead and add that colored background, which is the whole point of the episode. So to do so, let's go up to, we're gonna go to layer, we're gonna go to new fill layer, and I'm gonna go to solid color. There we go, let's hit okay there, and you can choose your color. So let's start off with, I'm gonna start off with a bright red, something that's going to match the dress. So let's hit okay. Now, I need to put this layer behind our subject. There we go, and now we have a solid colored background around our subject. Pretty easy. Now, we're gonna be changing this. I wanna add a little bit of a vignette to the background. You'll notice, if I hold shift and click on the original image, there's a little bit of a vignette on the original image. You can see how it's lighter in the center of the background. It gets a little darker towards the edges. It just helps it makes, a look, makes it look a little bit more realistic. So, I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna to go to our adjustment layers. So let's go to layer. We're gonna to go to new adjustment layer, and I'm gonna to go to hue slash saturation. Hit okay. Now in this case, I just wanna lower down my lightness a little bit, okay? And we're gonna bring our saturation down a little bit as well. Okay, now in this case, this is visible everywhere. So what I wanna do, I wanna make sure that this is only going to be visible around the edges. So there are a lot of different ways to do that. The way we're gonna do it is grab a elliptical marquee. I'm gonna click and drag a selection around pretty much the majority of my image here because we're, again, we wanna create that vignette. So drawing a selection right around here in the center. I'm gonna click on my layer mask and then we're gonna fill this with black on the layer mask. It's gonna make it in this area invisible of this layer. So let's go to edit, down to fill, and we're gonna go down to black and hit okay. So you can see basically what this does is now the area that we've darkened is only visible around the edges. So it's got a pretty hard edge, right? I mean, you could do all kinds of stylized stuff if you wanted to, but in this case, I want that edge to be uh, blurred. I don't want it to be a hard edge. So we're gonna go to filter, down to blur, and over to Gaussian blur. And you know, if you have a lower number, you're gonna get a little bit of a blur. As we bring our radius up, it gets higher and higher. And then, you know, right about there, it starts to look more realistic. And just the background in general, you can see this, this does look great, but this just looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, so now we've got a colored background in our photo. Let's go ahead and change the color and you're gonna see how easy it is. So now that we have one color chosen, it's really easy to change this color. If your client says like, okay, well that's nice in the red background, what does it look like on the blue? All you have to do is double click right here on your color fill layer. There we go, and simply choose a different color. So I'm gonna go with a light blue in this case, and I can simply move my hue slider around and change all my colors. Not only that, but if I hover over top of my image, you can see I've got a little eyedropper, and I can actually click in my image, and it'll draw the colors from my actual photo and replace the background with those colors, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and load up the light blue for now. You can see how easy it is to load different colors into your background. And all of a sudden we've got a totally different image. So your clients are gonna love this. You'll be able to deliver multiple versions of these images. And you know, if, if it's like a holiday type theme image or whatever, the red might be totally appropriate. Other types of year, maybe the blue is appropriate. So a great way to get multiple uses out of your portraits in Photoshop by simply changing the background color. Now, if you wanna do this on your own, just follow these key steps. The first step is to cut your subject out of the background. Now, if you've got a simple background like we have here, you can simply use the magic wand tool to select the background. Be sure to inverse the selection and then go to select and mask. Here you can remove the fringing around the edge of your subject. 
If you have a more complicated background, it's a little bit tougher to cut your subject out, and I recommend using the pen tool. We're going to link to an episode right in the description down below where you can learn how to do that. After creating your selection, go ahead and load it as a layer mask. This will put your subject on a blank background. Then go to Layers, down to New Fill Layer, and over to Solid Color. Here you can choose the color of your new background. I recommend adding a slight vignette to the background. It helps it look more realistic. So we're going to go to Layers, New Adjustment Layer, and over to Hue Saturation. Go ahead and lower down your lightness and your saturation. I grabbed a marquee selection tool and selected around the center of the image and filled that with black on my layer mask. Then ran a Gaussian blur so it's a nice even transition from the center of the image all the way to the outside. And to change your color at any time, simply double click on the solid color fill layer and change to any color you want. You can even use the eyedropper tool to grab colors from your photo. Cool. All right, guys, that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to add a new color to your background of your portraits. Now, if you love Photoshop and photography as much as I do, go ahead and click on the Flurn logo on your screen right now. We'll send you free tutorials every single week. And if you really want to bump up your retouching skills, be sure to check out Retouching 101 through 301. Click on the thumbnail on your screen right now. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone.